Bernard, what a ball game on tap tonight. Well, if anybody had a chance to look at the Houston Chronicle, they had a big article about the game tonight and uh, talking about forget about the 5A, forget about the colleges. This is the game to see the weekend. We've got tam uh, TV cameras from Houston here tonight. Radio stations, we understand, are going to be calling in, checking in the scores from around the state of Texas. Uh, the local radio station out of Grange, of course, is here tonight for the ball game. They're expecting a capacity crowd in Schulenburg and then some. Earlier today during the school, they were telling the students, if your parents and your family and friends are planning on coming to the game, tell them to get there early. East Bernard sold out all of their tickets in just a matter of hours. Schulenburg sold out all of their tickets, and just the tickets at the gate remain. And as we uh, are about 30 minutes away from kickoff, uh, we see the stands are packing in for parents' night. Oh, it's going to be a heck of a crowd here tonight. There's going to be, I expect both sidelines all the way around to be pretty full, two or three deep possibly. Uh, it's, it's the biggest game in town, the biggest game in the state, as you said before. Uh, we're going to have a, a heck of a crowd, and, and uh, it's, it might not be a benefit to anybody because we're going to have probably equal amount of crowd. Schulenberg, 8-0, 3-0 in the uh, district. They've uh, pitched two shutouts already this year in district. East Bernard, 8-0. They're 3-0 in district. Uh, the winner of this definitely has the inside track to the district championship with East Bernard playing Weimer and Schulenberg playing Platoni in the final weeks. Uh, of course, the loser definitely not out of it either. Uh, this is a type of ball game that you look at and say, hey, these are two great teams. You know, you'll probably see them meeting again in week four of the playoffs. Well, you have to look at it another way where which route do you want to travel getting to the quarterfinals, uh, which I, I, I fairly see both teams possibly meeting in the quarterfinals, like you said. Uh, if, if you're the second place team in this district, you go the south route, which means Refurio, Tidehaven, possibly those boys. If, you went, if you're the first place, you get to run up to the Hill Country where it's traditionally not as strong a football program, and you might get a chance to brush up on some of your rough spots and so on. Might be a little easier road. It, it means more than, than most people think this game. The Shorthorns have won two of the last three state championships. They're not a stranger to big ball games. You have lunch with Coach David Hoosman on Friday during the Booster Club. He always gets excited, always gets up for the ball game. What was he feeling today? He was pretty quiet. The man was nervous like always. He's uh. He's, he's leery of every game every week. He doesn't take anybody lightly, and, and, he, and rightly so tonight. He didn't have any right to take them lightly by any means. Uh, one thing Coach Hoosman has done is I think he's well prepared his team. Uh, this, like we always talked about during the year, the schedule is, is going to be a favorable factor for Schulenberg. We have a lot of pregame activities right now. We're going to take you down to the field. As we said, it's parents' night. So we'll go down to the field now, and then we'll be back with a look at our starting lineups and statistics. This is the big one, folks. It's the Horns and the Bramas coming up right here on Channel 16. So, Evan Senior, Evan Hart, Jordan Ayesha, and Jerry Hart, and Jordan Bow. Thank you. 
Injury to Kurt Bezetsny, uh, broke his collarbone in practice uh, in a non-contact drill, uh, no pads. Uh, we've moved Bo Bozel uh, to the defensive end, take him out of the secondary. Do you think that'll do any uh, any damage to our defense? Well, the only thing that I can see it is, is making a few players go two ways. We're bringing some people back into defense that have been the defensive player and that are quality players anyway. That, that uh, We might miss a little timing and a little bit of uh, rustiness at the beginning of the game playing some unfamiliar positions but I think once the emotions get up there and uh, we have some fine athletes and Sarton stepping in to play the safety where Bozel was before and uh, I don't think we're going to miss much to tell you the truth. I not to take anything away from from Bezesna. He was a that is a big loss to us by any means. He was he, he's done a fine job all year and uh, the prognosis is possibly three weeks he'll be back so hopefully we'll get in the position where we'll be in the playoffs that long. Leckler and, and uh, Blunston the two young men we talked about for East Bernard when you talk about Schulenberg, you talk about Sarton, you talk about Houston, you talk about Jamie Jackson, you talk about the regulators, you talk about Kevin Mark. There's not a weak spot uh, on that starting 11 on the offensive side of the football. Well, uh, my opinion is they're going to they're gonna key on Houston, you know that, and they're going to key on Jackson, I believe. Mark might have a big game. We might look to him to have a big game, or we might look to, uh, to Reigns or Wright in the backfield. If they run the ball hard, they're capable of 100-yard games any time. Uh, there's been success running the ball against East Bernard. Uh, maybe not as much looking at their schedule that it, you know, it, it could have affected the lower outputs on some of those games. But uh, Yoakum and so on had good running games. And Shiner had a fairly decent running attack last week uh, or a few weeks ago when they played them. I think uh, if we can get off to a good start running, we'll open a lot of doors. What about the keys? We always talk about keys to the ball game. You visit with Coach Hoosman every Friday afternoon uh, prior to kickoff. Uh, what are some of the keys? Don't let Leckler set up. We need to keep him on the run. Don't let him get those big shoulders square and let him be able to throw. He's got a rifle arm, throws a bullet. And uh, we need to keep him, keep the pressure on him. Shut down that running game. Make him throw where they have to throw. Make him roll out. Uh, we need to chase him. He's, he's a big man. And he, uh, maybe we can tire him out. Hope it, it happened in the years before. I recall, remember last year, uh, Shane Leckler spent more time on his back than he did uh, on his feet because the, the defense just gave him so much pressure. Sam Brown, I think, would be a big key tonight. He will be. I think I don't know who Sam uh, is lining up against, but they're going to have their hands full of, if, if he's playing the way he has in the past few weeks, and be able to put that pressure on the quarterback. Uh, we need to get that pressure is going to be a big key tonight. That offensive line that we're talking about for East Bernard, uh, Brian Chumchall at a guard is 180. The center, Clark Moreno, is 245. Uh, tackles Greg Kubis is 180. Ronald Clough is 270 at a guard, and Thomas Cortez is at 220. Face a similar line against uh, Houston Wheatley. Uh, I don't know if I want to compare the lines there. Houston Wheatley, I, a little bit more size, I believe. Uh, I think that's plays to our advantage, I believe, in this game. Uh, our quickness should help us on this game. Shiner had some success with their quick line against them. I think we can, we can fare the same way. We're going to take you down to the field uh, for a look at uh, the uh, Shorthorns in uh, just a moment. But first, before we do that, Jeff, is this a new look getting you ready for the playoffs, or did you just forget the razor? Well, if we don't pull this one out tonight, it'll come off pretty quick. <laughs> no, uh, for years my wife has been talking to me. I've been talking to her about running it, and she says, no, no, this year she finally gave in. I'm going to give it a try. Well, uh, the reason I was late tonight is because I did. I did get all nice uh, for Channel 16. <laughs> Jeff, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think so, Kevin. All right, we're going to take you down to the field now. 
And uh, we'll be back uh, after we go down to the field with a closer look at our starting lineup. Schulenberg Schulenberg Football on Channel 16. So the Shorthorns are out of the field, and they're going to try to rock the Bramas tonight. As we get set for Parents' Night, 1994, the biggest district game of the year for the Schulenberg Shorthorns, and here they are, ranked number one in the state. And Schulenberg Shorthorn football is brought to you each and every Tuesday night by Diamond S Restaurant, Fox Fire Builders, that's J.O. Renner. 10th Frame Bowling Alley, Audubon Travel Shop, Emco, Ken and Sherry Banks owners, Crumcheck Wagner Insurance Agency, Kelly and Doris Sarton, Schoenberg Livestock Auction Incorporated, Zimmerman's Garage, Vernon and Fawn Zimmerman owners, Schoenberg Printing and Office Supplies, and Sports Specialties, the Proschke families, and Dan and Jill Tabor. As the saying goes, they don't get no bigger than this at this point in the season. When you've got the number one ranked team and the number four ranked team in the state of Texas doing battle here tonight, as the Shorthorns and the Bramas get set. And East Bernard makes their way out of a big victory line. A lot of fans here tonight. And there they are, ranked number four in the state. Coach Ricky Sowles, East Bernard Bramas coming into Shorthorn territory tonight. And the Shorthorns will try to get off to another quick start, Jeff. It was 30 to nothing before you could blink an eye at the half last week against Shiner. Uh, that would be a nice start tonight. Oh, granted, it would be a great start, but uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet the mortgage on it. But uh, anything can happen from Kevin. It could be the other way, thirty nothing. We never know in this in this situation. Everything's on the line. They're gonna, everybody's gonna give it all. In a big ball game, Schulenberg just seems to rise to the occasion. Well, you see the Shorthorns dressed in their home black. They'll be ready to go out. That'll be Kevin Mark, Chad Gittert, Jason Houston, and Steven Sarton, the captains for East Bernard. Their captains include Roderick King, Thomas Cortez, Jody Domo, and Douglas Grigger. They are the captains for the East Bernard Bremas. You may also see some uh, men on the field with cameras. That's right, we've got the various media from throughout the state here for this ball game, billed by all the rating services as the top ball game in the state of Texas in all classifications. It's pretty similar to uh, Maynard a few years ago in the last district game that Schulenberg lost. Several years ago against Maynard, lost here on this stadium, came back to the regional finals and put it to him at Alamo uh, Stadium in uh, San Antonio. Well, I don't, I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to uh, go through a loss where we have to worry about coming back to face him the second time. Uh, everybody's dangerous the second time. I'd like to uh, beat him and uh, get a chance where we can maybe have the uh, – Maybe not have to play them if they have to go a long route. East Bernard has won the toss. They have deferred. So it appears as though Schulenberg will get the uh, football to start the ball game again this week. And they will. Jeff, what's the strategy there? I don't know. I, to me, I would rather uh, we were going to receive we won the toss anyway, more than likely. So it kind of played in our hands. So the Horns will start with the football to get this uh, huge district game underway. Our ball game being brought to you in part by Baumgarten Matula, Bruce and Cindy Bozel, 3D Belt Company, Steve and Sharice Dees, Charles and Gail Bow, Oak Ridge Smokehouse Restaurant, Robert Pam and Narissa Bezetsny, Tom and Dolores Sanders, Gallup Supermarket, Leo's Stop and Shop, Leo's Sheer Genius and Upstairs at the Downstairs, Mayor Leo Kopetsky, Dave and Kenny, The Record Rack, Barry and Melissa Shepard, Carrie and Lori Bauer, Gene Barber and Christine Ginnert, 
and Royce and Jeanette Kujay. Get the football to start things off. Before we go any further, I want to congratulate the Schulenburg JV winners last night, or Thursday night, 52-25. Schulenburg Lady Horns defeated Weimar tonight in volleyball, 15-7, 10-15, 15-12, to force a will play uh, to determine who plays East Bernard and who plays Brazos in the playoffs sometimes this coming week. So Schulenberg will get the football. Jason Houston is back deep. David Raines to his right and Kevin Mark here to the near side. It's going to be Roddy Blunston or is it Leckler? Leckler will do the kicking. And it's a knuckleball type kick. Raines at the 5 to the 10, the 15, 20 gets hit, stood up lunges forward to the 23 yard line first down and 10 horns the first possession with this lineup the quarterback of course is Steven Sarton the halfbacks Jason Houston David Raines Mark the tight end Jamie Jackson the flanker the huge offensive line the regulators Dustin Bozel at center the guards are Yurik and Kujay the tackle Segura and Dagan Steven Adams is a split end Bradley Wright will get the start in the backfield of course he will be uh spelled by Reigns throughout the night. First and 10 horns, ball at the 23 yard line. The handoff to Jason Houston, stood up in the backfield, dropped for a loss. Houston's first carry, he's knocked down by Nathan Shorter. Roderick King may have also made some contact. So no gain officially on the play, it bring, brings up second down 10 horns. We've just begun, Kevin Fishbeck, along with Jeff Prosky and Greg Uola on film here on Channel 16. Split backs, right to the uh, right, and Houston to the near side. Motion, this is Jackson coming our way. Sarden with the signals. The draw to uh, Houston, he's wrapped up, he's dropped for no gain, and maybe a loss on this one. Jeff, the Brema defense came to play. They're fired up. We're going to have to have a big play or something to get the momentum shifted. We need to... Uh, Get some type of big plays possibly right here. So it brings up a third down now and 11 for Schulenberg, similar to what happened last week in the Shiner ball game when Shiner stuffed the horns on three, then blocked the punt, but then could do nothing and, of course, didn't do anything all night as they were shut out 37 to nothing. Second shutout of the year for the horns in the district season. Third and 11, defense jumped. That's a dead ball foul, and if he wasn't drawn across, it will be a third and six. A break for the Horns if the young man was not drawn across. Dead ball, it is an offsides against the Bremas, and it will bring up third down and six. Schulenberg gets a little break. That may have been that hard count that we've seen from Sarton throughout the season. Third down and now six Schulenberg. As the play is brought in by Adams, the ball is going to be at the 20 seven yard line third and six horns first possession of the night they jump again flags will go down could be a free play starting is going to run he's going to get knocked down for a loss but hold the phones we may have an offside penalty again against the bramas that time jamie jackson is being double teamed in the uh, defensive secondary by blunston and nichols so they're right away. Jeff, you mentioned it uh, earlier. They may try to double up on Jackson. They do. We get another penalty. It's now third and one. Third and one. Hey, that's two games of. They're going to double up on Jackson. That's going to be somebody open. They're going to exploit that. You know who's going to watch that. They'll be, they'll be somebody open in case of that. So the penalty will go against the uh, Bremen. And the Shorthorns, of course, will take this penalty. And Instead of a fourth down situation, the play went for just a few yards, it will bring up third down and one. It was third and 11, and two offensive or defensive penalties have put the Shorthorns a third and a long one. Ten minutes left to go, capacity crowded, Shorthorn Stadium. Biggest district game of the year for either team. Sarden will pitch it. That is a great play by Thomas Cortez. So the third and one doesn't develop, and Houston loses four. Five on the play. Brings up fourth down and six. So East Bernard has started out strong defensively. 
And now it'll be Schrammick back deep to punt. Drop back to receive. Good snap. They're playing for the return. There's a punt taken by Leckler at the 40. Leckler in jail, gets away. Man on his back, Leckler, the moose still on his feet. What a big return by Shane Leckler. The young man had, was caught back at the 42. He carries it across midfield, and it's at the 49, first down and 10. The quarterback is Shane Leckler, a three-year starter. This is his fourth year as a starter. Chris Martinez, a wide receiver, along with Pollock. The running backs include Roderick King and Douglas Greer, Roddy, Roddy Bunston. The guard is Chum Chal at 180. Moreno, the center, at 245. They'll start out with Grigger and Blunston. Blunston with the football. He's got five, and then he gets knocked down by Schrammick. A gain of four. Gain of four on the play. Brings up a second down and six for East Bernard. Now nothing fancy there. Just a handoff to the uh, young man who's nearing 1,000 yards this season, Roddy Blunston. Ball at the 45-yard line, Shorthorn territory. Leckler, the quarterback, he has Grigger, the up back, Blunston, the tailback. Hand it again to Blunston, huge hole. First down, still on his feet. Up to the 36-yard line. That's going to be a gain of eight, nine yards, and a first down. Jeff is just a huge hole in that middle. Schulenberg's playing real tentative right now. They're, uh, I don't know if they're just trying to get the feel of the game early, but they're looking a little uh, sluggish and tentative. Hopefully we can turn this around. First down and 10, East Bernard. They come to the line. Clark Moreno, the center. Two splits to the right. Tight end, or the, uh, another split out to the left. High formation. Again, the handoff. Flags go down. Blunston, it's thrown from the back. It's probably going to have an illegal procedure call against the Bramas. If it is, it would be their third penalty, and it is. Illegal procedure call against East Bernard. So the Shorthorns will uh, take the uh, penalty, drive them back, as Chad Ginter checks into the ball game for the Shorthorns. Chad has been such a force defensively. Shepard will come out. They'll mark off five, and it brings up first and 15. Ball back to the 41 and a half yard line. 7.55 to go. Clock is rolling here. First quarter. Schulenberg lost yardage on both their first two plays, then got two penalties on third down. They lost six yards. Negative yardage for the Horns, their first possession. Now we'll go to the split backs. And Leckler wants to throw, and he's got all day to throw. And the ball is caught and dropped. Dropped on the sideline. Intended. Is that Raymond Edwards? It is. Incomplete. Raymond Edwards uh, had it and dropped it. Brings up second and 15. Ball was there. Ball was there. He just was looking for the hit, I believe, before he got caught the ball. That pattern could be a trouble spot for the Shorehorn defense. Well, he heard the footsteps of uh, Adam Bozum. And Bozel has been known to light your candle at both ends if he gets a lick. Offset look. Leckler wants to throw back the other way. Now he's in trouble. He's going to run. He's dangerous when he runs. On his feet. And then gets hit and clipped. Big hit by Bozel. He takes it up to the 30. It's going to be a gain of 11. Third down now and four. Schulenberg fans hollering a holding call. No hankies on the ground. Gain of 11 by Leckler. And brings up third down and four. The ball is at the 30-yard line. It's Domo bringing in the play as Martinez goes out. Third down, long three for East Bernard. 6.45 remaining, first quarter of play, no score. Wants to throw, the man is open, and it's broken up. Oh, what a play by Jamie Jackson. He's come big up for us again. Big play here for East Bernard, big decision to take. Do you take a chance on a fourth and long three, or do you punt it and try to pin Schulenberg deep? I don't want to give Schulenberg possession anywhere outside the 20-yard line. I don't know. You've got a good field goal kicker. I don't know if he can kick a 47-yarder. He does have the leg to do it. 
and they are going to try a 47 yard field goal. But oh, what a play by the junior, Jamie Jackson. Martinez will hold. Leckler will line it up from about 47 and a half yards. It's a bad snap. He, the Martinez in trouble. He's going to throw a pass. Intercepted by Adams. Adams on his feet. He should have just dropped the football, but it really doesn't matter. They get it about the same place. Bad snap. It was a bad snap. It was behind him. It was behind the, uh, the, the holder. It wasn't going to develop. Looked like it would have took too long to spot the ball. A good decision on the, on the spotter to not take the chance and get the block and maybe get the ball further back. Uh, we got breaks going both ways now. We'll see what happens. Each team has had their break so far. Neither team has been able to develop it. Horns have it, 27-yard line. First down, 10, going the other way. Adams with an I, uh, the, the interception. Jackson here to the left, getting the double coverage. The defense jump, no call. David Reigns, huge hole. David Reigns gets a block. Stood up, lines forward. Oh, what a run by David Reigns of 13 yards and a first down. Right up the middle of the box. Kevin, as we talked about earlier, they're going to key on Houston. We know that. We've got to get our other backs to have a successful night for us to have a, uh, have a successful game. Uh, Reigns and, and Wright are going to have to come up big. First and ten horns there. Initial first down of the night, and now we're in positive yardage for the ball game. Ball just shy of the 40. First down, ten. Strong right formation. Split backs. And give it to Jason. Jason cuts it back up. He's got some running room. He's dangerous at the 50. At the 45, another first down for the horns. A gain of 15 for Jason Houston. Jason tried to cut it back inside. He's known for cutting it outside. They took it away from him, and he almost broke it back in. A, a good play by Eastern R's defense to turn it back into your pursuit to uh, help make that tackle. I wouldn't want to face him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, a good play by Eastern R's defense. First and 10 horns. Ball across midfield at the 46-yard line. Two successful running plays. Sarton has not attempted a pass here this, morning, uh, this evening. He will drop back, hand it to Reigns. Gets caught up, gets away. David Reigns goes forward. Nice tackle out there by number 35, Dustin Huff. But not before Reigns. Carries the ball across the 45 to the 44. It's going to be a gain of three. Three on the play. Second and long seven for the Shorthorns. First quarter, five minutes left. A very quick first quarter. Split backs. Sarton with two receivers out to the right. Mark is split out here to the left. Sarton in trouble. He can do this real good. In trouble. Still trying to get away. Gets away from him and will run it. Gets hit hard. Gets back to the normal line of scrimmage. Good pursuit out there by Jody Domo, but he just couldn't catch the quick Sarton. Sarton took it back to the uh, line of scrimmage and brings up third down now and seven. Kevin, one thing I think might make a difference later in the game is you've got Leckler out there having to play some tough defense on the defensive line going both ways. Maybe he's in shape enough to handle it both ways because we're going to run you. Uh, we'll see if it takes toll late in the game. Well, Shane is on the sideline now getting a little bit of a breather. What does that do to their defensive scheme of things? We may find out. Third down and seven. Split backs, Reigns and Houston. Jackson to the near side. Adams to the far side. Mark the tight left. Hand it off to Reigns. Gets hit and nothing doing there. Gets hit, wrapped up, and no gain. Maybe one. It brings up fourth down. Fourth down, and they'll give him a forward progress. A gain of one, it'll bring up fourth down and uh, seven. And Shamick will drop back to punt for the second time tonight for the Schulenberg Shorthorns. Fourth down and seven for the Horns. What started out as a good drive just sputtered. Nice punt. Shramick, fair catch is being called for and made at the 15-yard line by Chris Pollock. So the drive started good, Jeff, but then it kind of just sputtered out. Well, at least we're playing on their side of the field now. I like that a lot better. Uh, it's going to be tense this first half, probably. I'm sure there's uh, going to be uh, some tough football be playing out there, and we'll see if anywhere happens during the second half. They'll mark the ball at the 16-yard line. First down, 10. 3.18 left to go in our first quarter play. No score. Second possession for the visiting Bramas of East Bernard. Ibex. 
They'll turn, give it to Blunston. Blunston has a hole, but then Gennett wrapped him up. Gain of four. Up to the 21-yard line. And it brings up a second and six call for Coach Sal and the East Bernard Bremas. Heck of a crowd on hand here tonight throughout this stadium. Both East Bernard, Schulenberg, and of course the area, and state for that matter. Handed again, Blunston tripped up in the backfield. Might have been uh, Ricky Hernandez was being blocked down to the ground, but Ricky still had enough to stop him and drop him for a loss. Third down now. We've got third and seven with two and a half left to go in the first quarter. Neither team has really wanted to throw the ball. Ace Bernard has thrown a couple of times, but third down and long for the East Bernard Bramus. Two splits out here to the right, one to the left. Leckler back to pass. Here comes Sam. Throws. The man is there. Incomplete. The man was wide open. Roderick King had a step on Trump.